Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange, of course. I'm here. I'm joined by Mr. Guns and Gear. Some not, right. <laughs> not so good news going on, Mike, today. Uh you know, pros and cons. Things could be worse, for sure. Absolutely. So we're doing kind of like an exclusive video here for Ammo Land News. Um, and I I heard about it this morning, but I think this happened to you yesterday. Your Facebook page got deleted. Well, just uh, okay. And for the sake of clarity, it got mm -hmm. unpublished, which is unpublished. different. Okay. I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I appealed it, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, they basically gave me a message that due to COVID nineteen, they couldn't, they didn't have anybody to review it. So, oh, wow. no, it's going to happen there. But of course, even with COVID nineteen, they have enough people to unpublish it. <laughs> so that was I know. Strange. I mean, it's it's literally like just pushing a couple of buttons. So, if just sure. just for let me see if I could roll this in here. Um, so, okay. for anyone out there who doesn't uh, realize this is happening, let's see here. I'm going to go to the phone for a second. If you search Mister Guns and Gear, you see Facebook. And you click on it, you get this, the link you followed may be broken or the page may have been removed. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's always fun to get, right? Uh, not so much. It's uh, it's it's, it's uh, a little bit scary because it takes a long time, as you know, to build an audience, you know, on any platform. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still have hope that it'll come back, but um, I suppose one important factor would be why do I think this happened, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, I did a video on my channel about it where you guys can check that out if you want to on YouTube and Instagram. But um, essentially, I went to a rally in North Carolina, uh, basically, a, I think it's called Reopen North Carolina was the name of the rally. Mm -hmm. But it was folks that just wanted you know more sectors of our economy to be opened and people who were losing money and can't pay bills, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, I did a live stream about it. I don't even think I commented in the video. I think it was just straight up a live stream of what was actually happening and the marchers going around. Uh, the state capitol <clears throat> um and uh apparently a couple days ago uh facebook said that they were going to take down anything that was uh, geared towards this and then the day before yesterday as of right now uh, so that would have been the 20th their pr team came out and basically said oh no no that's not what we meant we're only going to do it if it violates state guidelines and stuff mm -hmm. like that okay In north carolina the governor had absolutely sanctioned this event he had spoken out multiple times saying that the rally was good and it was perfectly fine. So yeah, it didn't seem to meet those criteria, but I'm not sure if the screeners know that or, or whatnot, but yeah, I think what would be what, what would be wrong with um, showing a rally of people in your state that want to get everything open and back to work. There's lots of people going out of business, right? The small business owners, etc. cetera. Um, lots. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. You know, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, I was aware of their policy and then their updated policy, so I assumed that I was within the rules. Uh, you know, I try not to violate any, you know, content restrictions on any platform. But mm -hmm. uh, apparently, I don't, again, I don't know if they just are interpreting the rules differently for me or what the case may be. But I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Yeah, um, and who just, knows? Who knows who's down there, right? Pushing the buttons. Right. Nowadays, especially since they're saying that they don't have enough of a staff, but yet they have a staff to somehow unpublish your channel or be aware right. of what you're even up to. Right. Um, it, it's it's kind of a weird situation. And it's not just Facebook, right? I know you shared with me an article about YouTube. YouTube's got plans specifically aimed at uh, folks on social media on YouTube that talk about COVID-19. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Uh, essentially, the YouTube has put out now, and I, I did share this. I don't think I've shared it publicly yet, but I will tonight. Um, the they're planning basically. They say anything that goes against the WHO's advice or guidance on COVID nineteen will be removed from the platform. And there's already been a ton removed. Uh, the CEO of YouTube has already said that there was thousands of videos that have been removed. Yeah, I mean, that's even worse, right? So basically, if the WHO doesn't agree with what we're saying, it's not not going to be allowed on YouTube? That's that's what she said. Right. I mean, you can, read, you can, you can listen to her own interview. The interview was originally uh, done on CNN. Mm -hmm. so. 
Yeah, I'm, yeah. I've got I've got the article thrown up here on the screen while you and I are talking. The headline is YouTube CEO. Um, anything that goes against the WHO is a violation of YouTube policies. What like this is this is some kind of surreal dystopian world that we're living in now, where the WHO dictates in America what can you know like the the First Amendment essentially. Yeah, I mean, I, again, I don't I don't disagree with you on anything. It's it's just it's like the theater of the absurd at this point. Mm -hmm. Do you think these? Do, do you, you know, think you? I, go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off there. Mm -hmm. I was going to say it's um you know everyone wants to make the First Amendment art uh, debate about it, mm -hmm. and you know people say it's a publisher versus platform debate, which that could be a video for another day. Mm -hmm. But who are pro two A have been under these types of restrictions forever. Um, anybody who does what we do, we know that there's certain things we simply can't say mm -hmm. on these platforms that will be removed. And now uh, a whole another subset of YouTube creators is learning that uh, the hard way. So. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that uh, that I was going to ask you about. How come <laughs> lately it seems like everything that we do is, is coming under attack one way or the other? I don't think this is the first time for any of your pages on Facebook to be unpublished. Mine has mm -hmm. been unpublished for like seven weeks and they refuse to restore it. Yep. You know? Yeah, no, I've, I've had a... Uh, one, my, which is technically my wife's page, it's um, mm. the Mrs. Benzabir page was unpublished once. Um, and then I've received multiple strikes. Um, however, every strike I've ever received, with the exception of one, which was on my personal page, which that's kind of fun mm -hmm. in and of itself, but every strike I've ever received, um, I've won the appellate process. Mm -hmm. So, you know, prior to the page being unpublished, as far as I know anyway, there was no bad, you know, marks against the page at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh oh, one of the security guards there <laughs> on alert. <laughs> With my dog. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so what? I, I mean, what are we supposed to be do? What are we supposed to do about this? I mean, that's really the thing for me. I'm. We're we're constantly getting hit with this. I don't think your audience out there or mine uh, or the folks that that are looking at this. I don't think this is the first time they've seen it. We keep getting smacked upside the head. How should we be looking at all of this? Well, um, you know, it's tough because there's an equal number of people who are going to say fight it and an equal number of people who are going to say just leave the platform. Well, mm -hmm. if you leave the platform, you lose your reach. And with what we do, uh, it's not so much that I care that someone listens to what I'm saying. It's that I care that they're exposed to information, right? So mm -hmm. the kind of videos that we do aren't really like you're not going to see it on the history channel or you're not going to see it on mm -hmm. whatever discovery like we're doing real pro second amendment stuff mm -hmm. so a lot of people there's nowhere else to see it and if if we have our own subset of place to post then you're preaching to the choir and you know every day like literally every day i get at least one message of somebody who's like hey i just picked up my gun for the first time and your videos really helped me or i was thinking about picking one up and now i did because your videos so mm -hmm. i mean those are very real and that's I mean ultimately the mission of what we do so if you're not where the regular people are quote unquote mm -hmm. then you're missing out on opportunities to you know spread our knowledge and, and grow our community yeah and that's kind of dangerous like you said we're kind of, we've kind of been sanitized I don't know I guess in the past you could find this kind of information in other places um, right. not really nowadays it's, yeah. it's harder and harder every day. yeah so, and, and then there's probably also folks out there that say, hey, what, what does this mean? It doesn't even mean anything, right? What does it matter? It's just social media. Can you, you know, I, I can't think of anyone better to speak to this. What does this mean to people like me and you and the other guys out there that do what we do? Other guys and girls. Well, sure. Well, for us, I mean, obviously it's, it's I'll, I'll, I'll put it a better way. So my wife and I were talking to another YouTube uh, gun channel guy. We're in a kitchen at their house. A while back and uh, she asked him you know like what do, what are you what are your fears what are your worries and about but she was talking about life she wasn't talking about mm -hmm. what professional what we do and he said I I wake up every day in fear that my entire channel is gonna be gone mm -hmm. right that's mm -hmm. every day you wake up like that now I don't in my life in fear per se but it's it's a unique challenge for folks who will do what we do um, my strategy has been especially over the last two years to try to diversify the content 
where I put it as much as possible. I really just put the content everywhere as much as possible. So I started uploading to IGTV as well. However, they have some weird restrictions, as I'm sure you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the vast majority of my videos that I've been posting on my YouTube channel, which um, is what most people know me for, I've been putting on Facebook as well. And the videos on Facebook actually, on average, more than double uh, in terms of views, do more than double rather than YouTube. So there's a big of, there's a big audience of people over there. I mean, it's just convenient huge. for people. Yeah, huge. Mm -hmm. And if you upload direct to Facebook, as of right now, at least my page wasn't. There's no logarithmic censorship. Um, there is if you just post a YouTube video like a link, but if you upload direct, there isn't. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. why they just expose it to so many more people. Whereas YouTube, of course, throttles what we're seeing mm -hmm. or what is seen or content rather. Yeah, but uh, but Facebook's kind of competing with YouTube. So if people I, are putting unique content on Facebook servers, then they kind of like favor that. Correct, and mm -hmm. Facebook is even starting to get SEO'd on like Bing and basically anything that's not Google. Mm -hmm. Facebook videos are getting SEO'd, which that's crazy by itself in, mm -hmm. in, a, in a market shift, if you will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so, so spreading it out like that, that's a further complication. Uh, I also put my stuff on GunStreamer. I'm not sure whether or not you're doing that um, at this I'm point. I'm not. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, and there's just so, so many. Yeah, there's only so much time. There's so many different places. You've got to somehow support that. And then unfortunately, if, if folks are looking at it through there, it's very tough to communicate with them on YouTube and then Facebook and then, you know, this thing right. and that thing. So um, and still how because someone looking at this would still who doesn't know, they're still going to say, well, why does that matter to you guys? Why, you know, do you even have to be here doing this? You know, how would you answer? Like, I'm. This is what I do for a living. I'm. This. I'm a small okay. business person. This is my business. Um, but you know, how, how do you how do you answer those kinds of questions? Yeah. So I mean, so this is one of my businesses, and Hank, Hank knows we have several in our family. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's definitely a way to generate income to pay our bills for sure. Mm -hmm. But for me, and everyone's different. Everyone's numbers are different. Um, but for me, I reach more people on Facebook than literally every other social media platform combined. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very valuable, of course, and like I said, the mission of what we do, but also the business of what we do. And I mean, I, I think the big, like I get that Facebook is a private company and all that, but the problem I have with them, the same with YouTube, is that they tend to retroactively apply new rules, right? Mm -hmm. So. When I put that video up, it was within the rules, and then all of a sudden, it, the same things happen on YouTube. Like mm -hmm. you know this, in the past, I don't know, three weeks, I've had five or six videos removed from my YouTube channel that were fully within the rules when they were posted, and apparently now they're not. And it's just, mm -hmm. that, it's not a fair playing ground because just like we have as a YouTube content creator, when we agree to become one, we have a contract with them, right? Mm -hmm. Well, they also have a contract with us, and the yeah. same is true on Facebook and Instagram, and. And if they're able to violate it and we're not, that's problematic for any business environment. It doesn't matter what you do. Mm -hmm. And I think like if you look at if you look at certain things that are going on in the news, like the reason why people are looking to us, like Mike is saying, is that, you know, I hate to say this, but there actually is fake news. Um, and a lot of it is coming from mainstream media. Uh, just one example that I could think of, CNN was blasting um, Elon Musk for never uh, supplying the ventilators that he said that he would supply. And then Elon Musk was like, what, what are you guys talking about? You know, and started showing uh, tweets and Facebook posts and all that kind of stuff of the, the folks who got the ventilators. And, and receipts and tracking numbers for all of them. Too. Yeah, yeah. So it's really weird. And, yeah, yeah. Was... yeah. And, and this is the, the reason why people are turning away from them. You can, it's so obvious that it's skewed in one direction. And then they don't talk about what we're talking about. Like if, they're, if, if on the subject of guns that you, that you and I are into and the Second Amendment, you know, all they do is tell people these things are scary and horrible, do bad things, they should go away. Yep. Yep, yeah. it's true. And I, I frequently, again, on Facebook, post stories of guys, good guys with guns is what I call it. Mm -hmm. uh, Folks, everyday folks who use guns to stop, you know, homicidal felons, mm -hmm. and that people constantly, every time I post that, constantly people say, 
I live 10 minutes from there and I didn't hear about it until now. Yeah. It happens every time I make that post. Yeah. So again, it's just another reason why those things are important. It's a real thing. It's a real thing, but no one realizes it. Like I always, I, I enjoy those things that you put up, even though they're a little bit scary. And I get that it could be a little bit scary, but you need to, you need to think about the things that could happen to you, especially in the comfort of your own home before it happens. Absolutely. That's the only way you're going to actually be prepared for when someone suddenly kicks the door down. Right, when you might have three seconds to react on a good day. Yeah, so, I mean, that's the reason why we do that. What do you, you know, I don't want to make this super long. I just wanted to kind of touch bases with you and what's going on here. What do you think's the solution to this, Mike? Where, where is the way out here? Or do you think there's not one? Is this like an apocalypse for us or, and just an excuse for them to wipe us off of social media altogether? Um, I mean, they've had that excuse for a while now. Um, at any point, if they wanted to, the big social media companies could do so. You know, you look at like the Las Vegas shooting and mm -hmm. all those sorts of things. Anytime they could do that if they want to. So far, they've shown that at least on the macro level, they don't seem to want to. Mm -hmm. uh, there's certainly micro cases where they do. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the way ahead, what I'm pursuing anyway is, you know, any kind of string I can pull behind the scenes that I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, any business connections I can with folks at Facebook, I'm using those um, in a, the appellate process as well. Um, but even if my page doesn't come back, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make a new one and keep pressing on because that's all I can do. Again, like the entire, if, if I don't reach people, mm -hmm. I'm just a dude talking to a camera by myself, mm -hmm. right? So, for no reason, for no reason. <laughs> That. Yeah, for no reason. Because people don't have right. any way to discover you or figure out, hey, right. I like what this guy. And, and I'm telling, I'm not just saying this because you and I are friends. We are friends. <laughs> You've done a lot to help me, like in this industry, and and to grow. But I also know for a fact that you help a lot of people out there. I know people that that re like reach out to you, and most of them do it through Facebook. You know, there's yeah. folks looking out for you to help them out on Facebook. That's wow. how they interface with you. Yeah, this is a scary thing. I mean, for the like I said, seven weeks ago, they deleted my Facebook. They refuse. There's some insiders that have tried to get my my page back, and they've mm -hmm. basically said to me, "Dude, who did you piss off at Facebook?" Because right. they will not put this page back. You know, and I did yeah. what you said. I started all, all over from scratch. So I went from having a, a Facebook page that had about seventeen thousand followers. Right now, I got about two hundred. It's kind of tough, and, and you know, with the way that YouTube and all that's going, I even use Facebook, for example, and other social media to tell people that I've got a video up there because there's, there's so much, right? Absolutely. And another point that I just thought of as you were saying that, too, um, you know, during the coronavirus, if anybody's watched my channel within the past week or two, mm -hmm. in every video I've been saying, because I, I generally – because the way YouTube is now, I don't see all the comments just like you don't, mm -hmm. the way they moderate it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas in the past, we used to. I tell people, if you actually need a question or answered, shoot me a message on Facebook because I see all mm -hmm. of them with the coronavirus going on. I mean, like, no, on a normal day, like, everything's, you know, sunny and good. Right. <laughs> I get 100 to 1,000 messages a day, which are just questions, right? Mm -hmm. So during the coronavirus, I've been getting, like, legit two to 3,000 a day mm -hmm. and I'm one guy trying to answer this. So I spend hours every day trying to answer them, which is good. I have no problem with that. It's, mm -hmm. Again, that's good. But so right now, I mean, I don't even know what the number is, but it's probably like there's a backlog of probably 20 to 30,000 people out there who have a question about what type of gun to use for, to defend themselves or how to pick up mm -hmm. ammo if they live in California or whatever the case may or be. Or they just bought a gun. What do they do now? <laughs> right. Are those que and those questions are being unanswered right now because I can't answer them. Yeah, you know, it so. really it really sucks. Um, do you think that because I'm I'm getting a feeling here that um, the powers that be, politicians basically, on whatever side you you want to put them on, do you think they're going to let us out of this COVID nineteen um, lockdown situation, or we're permanently going to live here, or they're going to like maybe let us out and then drop it back on us? You know, when they take the chains off, they don't want to take them off permanently. Well, yeah. I mean, there's any historical study will tell you that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. um, so the answer to that is, I mean, that's like a 20 minute discussion. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually, of course, they have to. Mm -hmm. um, the economic impacts that we're having are, are simply um, disastrous. I think my first video that I made addressing coronavirus was mm -hmm. probably, I'd have to look at the date, but probably six or seven weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. And um, 
actually, I just got an interesting email from somebody very powerful in the media. It just Uh-oh. showed up on my screen. That's a side note. All right. Stay tuned. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <Anyways>. <laughs> so, um, mm-hmm. uh, I made in that video, I said, cause again, we didn't know what the quote unquote, the curve and all that stuff was going to look like. And I said, sadly, I think the coronavirus is going to bankrupt more people than it kills. Um, that's partly because all of my friends, I don't think I have like a single good friend who isn't a small business owner. So mm-hmm. I kind of, Right. I see what happens and people just can't go months without income mm-hmm. yet still having to pay salaries, still having to pay property tax, still having to pay uh, unemployment insurance, uh, still having to pay social security insurance, all these things that as an employer we all have to pay. Like you just, it's, it's not realistic. That's not realistic. And then we don't even know the numbers of businesses that have gone out of business yet. And even the unemployment stats, I mean, they're abhorrent. They're, they're, we've never seen percentages like this since the Great Depression. There's, as I, I think the last I saw was 25 million people file for unemployment currently. I mean, that's crazy. The one cure is worse in America. Right. The cure is worse than the disease here. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know that it is or isn't, but mm-hmm. what I do know is that the cure is not sustainable. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Um, there's lots of folks that are uh, that are resharing what's going on with you. I know that Eric from Iraq Veteran did, and I saw some other people that did that as well. Uh, what are the ways that you think uh, folks can help you out here with the situation to to get this back, or even like you know what's op- alternate options of where they could go now that Facebook sure. is not a thing? Sure. So I mean, I'm on all the major platforms: YouTube, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I'm actually on TikTok now, which they oh, no. ban. They ban like one out of every three videos I put up, which is mm-hmm. frustrating. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, yeah. So, so you're so you are you doing uh, guns and gear dances on TikTok? I gotta ask you, man. Okay. TikTok. Lots of full auto stuff. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. I, I think know. I have an account there. I haven't posted anything though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but um, and then uh, my backup page on Facebook right now is the Mrs. Guns and Gear page, which is mm-hmm. just Facebook.com slash Mrs. Guns and Gear one. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is where I'm posting stuff now, but um, what people can do honestly is just raise awareness to this type of situation. Like I just said, I just got an email from somebody like mm-hmm. legitimately in a large network in a major news network. So mm-hmm. some people of this, the word's getting out on yeah. this. And all you can do is just, you know, I made a video, it's on my channel, share that video everywhere you can. Mm-hmm. And just people will get frustrated. Unfortunately, uh, Facebook doesn't have like an inbox for complaints. That's just not a thing. I'm sure they do that intentionally. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's no one you can reach out to. It's just spreading the word, you know, unfortunately. Yes. Uh, there have been, I should actually back that back up a little bit. Um, there have been several politicians nationally, uh, members of Congress, both the Senate and the House, that have spoke out against what Facebook is doing mm-hmm. publicly. So, I mean, bringing that issue up to them might be something that yeah. could help. I don't know. Yeah, that's we have to apply that pressure. I know once again, we're going to get lots of comments of people saying, hey, get your own things. There are people that have separate things. We're all working on that. But it's not working, in my opinion, because there's not a big uh, industry support for it. You know, and then, like you said, man, if we're in a closed pool, then, you know, what's the likelihood of growing that or people being able to find us? We've got to somehow sort this out. Yep. You know, Agreed. and maybe it's time for the politicians who say they, they they're on our side to step in and uh, do something about it. You know, it, yeah, I agree. And what's crazy is there shouldn't be a side to this. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. There shouldn't be a side. Yeah. There should be like, oh, it's the First Amendment. OK, cool. Or, oh, it's like citizen journalism or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever you call it, because mm-hmm. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. You know, I'm not out there pushing a conspiracy theory i posted a video a live video of something happening mm-hmm. like i didn't make that up you know yeah. <laughs> it was happening yeah like there's no side to that yeah all we're doing is trying to deliver information to people just like lots of people do on all these social medias every day the people who talk about makeup who talk about cars or or uh watches or i don't know wh- whatever it is out there like everything in the world people talk about it and this is something that we're into we have some levels, like my, my level of understanding is a little bit lower than your level, but you know, we're just trying to share our, our understanding and point of views. That's it. I agree. Yeah. Okay. And uh, any final things here before we get out of here? I don't want to, I know you got tons of stuff to do and people to talk to. Yep. Uh, no, that, nothing. Just besides, like I said, in my video I put up last night, all I can do is push on um, people. This is nothing in a, on the relative scale of, of difficulties in life right and i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not so self-centered that i believe otherwise so yeah that's it Just absolutely 
thanks thanks for uh, coming on to talk about that, man. And a big thanks to everyone out there, I'm sure, that are helping to spread the word. And, you know, we, we really appreciate you guys doing that. Um, you know, it's it's at least I think you, you know when you look at this that there are lots of people that support you. I know sometimes it seems like those are virtual people until you get out there and you see them, which you do. But it, it's, it's good to know there are folks out there that support us. Absolutely. Agreed. Okay, awesome. Thanks a lot, Mr. Guns and Gear. Uh, thanks to everyone watching this and uh, Ammo Land News. We're out of here. We, we will uh, talk to you guys soon. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.